cloud. Okay, here we go, and we're on. So I asked you uh, to just complete the the Zoom uh, the Zoom poll, and I was curious to see how everybody feels at the start of this session about OER and what do you think about? And what we see is most of you are thinking that it's online, free, that those are the top two results. We see customizable, definitely confusing, hopefully less so in three hours and not worse, definitely student-centered and yay, mostly compatible with Blackboard. So that's great. Thank you for your thoughts on uh, where you stand right now with um, OER and what you're thinking about. Let me just share my slides here and we will move forward. We got through the poll question. Next, as we get started, I just have um, a couple of wonderful uh, inspirational speakers here to give you words of welcome. And we're going to start with Ronalyn Wilson, our Assistant Vice President for Academic Affairs. So Ronalyn, I will hand things over to you. Excellent, thank you so much, Brenda. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to be here, even if it is virtually, uh, especially on a Friday afternoon. Uh, but this is a really important topic. The reality of $300 textbooks um, is concerning. Right, I've heard justifications as probably you have as well, such as financial aid will cover the cost, uh, but some students do not have financial aid. Um, some have limited aid or worse yet are using student loans. So I just wanna tell a quick tale about some of my history. So I remember 25 years ago sharing textbooks with roommates or trying to see if class notes were enough to do well on exams. So I was not alone. I took a look at some statistics here and according to the Chronicle of Higher Education, seven in 10 students didn't purchase a textbook because it was too expensive. One in five college students has skipped or deferred a class due to the price of required learning resources. 60% of students have delayed purchasing textbooks until or if they received financial aid. So although the cost of textbooks is not a new problem, OERs are a newer solution. So thank you all for being a part of the solution. So I thought it would be important for me to quickly note a Penn State study that I recently saw that found that students are achieving the same learning outcomes with OERs. So there is not a quality of learning issue. Because I have heard the criticism that some OER content is not good. Well, it is up to content experts to address that and they have through direct editing and will continue to do so. So in closing, one of the best pitches for OER use that I've heard was, students anywhere in the world can use them at any time. So on that note, I hope you have a great session and thank you for tuning in and I'll turn it back over to Brenda. Thank you everyone. Ronalyn, thank you so thank you so much for sharing uh, that that very compelling data. Um, we'll we'll see more examples of that later on in this session and talk a little bit more and and even in, hear some student testimonials um, that bear out the data that that Ronalyn just described for us. Um, so a uh, very uh, great, great way to, to frame um, our next few hours together. Thank you for that. Um, the OER initiative has been successful, I think, in part because we have a number of campus partners. Um, and you'll be hearing from a number of those campus partners, as well as some off-campus partners uh, throughout the afternoon. But I wanted to introduce Jen Eaton the faculty liaison to the Center for Excellence in Teaching is our next speaker to talk briefly about the partnership we have with the CET. Jen, over to you. Thanks, Brenda. Thanks for inviting me to say a few words this afternoon. Um, I actually was in your seat, everybody that's here today, I was in your seat a year ago, um, sat through the, the initial intro training and happy to say I did adopt an OER textbook for my math 
uh, 110 class this past fall and continue to use it again um, this, this current semester. Um, what I wanted to share with you today is that recently the CET partnered with the OER committee to be sure that faculty have the support and professional development opportunities regarding OER adoption and beyond. Periodically, you'll receive emails from me um, with opportunities for webinars, conferences, roundtable discussions. They're typically free, um, and I would encourage you to participate if you're able. In addition, this coming May, um, I'll be sending out uh, very shortly uh, registration information, but there's actually a free conference uh, this May open to all. It's a three-day virtual event, and it's part of a multi-state collaboration for open education in the Northeast. So be on the lookout for that information from me. If you do participate in OER-related professional development opportunities, the CET um, will award certificate credit in one of two areas. So you can earn credit towards either the teaching and learning, integrating instructional technology category, or the technology in the classroom and beyond emerging technologies category. By participating today, you're automatically gonna earn three hours in CET credit. So we will get the attendance from Brenda and we will be putting that um, into uh, the transcripts. Carol will take care of getting those on the transcripts. If you have any questions about the various certificates the CET offers, questions about earning credit or any OER professional development opportunities, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Enjoy the day, um, the afternoon, and thank you for taking these first steps towards OER adoption in your classes. Thanks, Brenda. Jen, thank you so much for those, for those words of encouragement. We're really excited about the opportunity for um, to partner with CET in particular to give participants in this workshop and others credits towards those um, desirable certificates that are offered by the college. Um, so this is just uh, contributing to overall faculty professional development. Um, do keep an, uh, keep an eye open for the announcement from Jen about the May OER Summit that's um, typically held at UMass Amherst. A number of faculty uh, from Hudson Valley have attended that in the past and have found it to be very beneficial. And um, this year, we don't have to worry about travel costs since it will be virtual. And I encourage attendance at that event as well. Okay, so now let's move on to focusing just on our, our day. Um, let's see, you should be able to see my PowerPoint right with my next slide on that. Yep, so I'm seeing some head nods. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> And um, what I wanted to just review with you, um, you all received a copy of the agenda in the email reminder, um, but what we're gonna be doing today, um, today's session is really broken up into four parts. I realize that three hours is a long time to Zoom. Um, and hopefully you were relieved when you saw the agenda to see that um, there's breaks uh, between each one of the sections. So in this first one is just some introductions um, providing some definitions and giving you some overall framework for OER. In the second portion of the, today's program, you're going to be hearing some from some of our faculty champions, both on campus and from our keynote speaker from Monroe Community College, who I know is going to be very inspiring. Um, she's received national recognition for her excellence as a teacher and is well uh, known for her OER involvement and in championing at her campus. Um, the, the third portion of our program today will focus on searching for OER and introducing you to tools that have been collected on the library website where you can go to find OER in your discipline and to hear about what sources of support are available to you in, that, in your quest for high quality OER. Um, that'll be the third portion. And then we'll wrap up this afternoon with next steps, um, some campus supports and next steps, some paperwork that's required. You will be, I think, delighted to see how minimal the paperwork is. We'll talk about the, uh, what you'll need to do at the end of the workshop today. If you're eligible for a stipend, how to complete the paperwork for that and then how to move on to shift to developing your proposal to adopt OER. 
I did get a question from one of the attendees earlier this week who said, if I attend on Friday, do I have to adopt an OER? And let me just clarify, you don't. So today is really professional development, learning about OER, and it's, it's completely optional for you to determine if after this session, if you intend to develop an OER. So that is not required um, as part of participation in today's workshop. All right, so moving along, um, let's, uh, let's talk about what OER are or is. I move back and forth about whether I consider OER singular or plural. So I know there's a lot of you English faculty out there in the audience today. It was a big cohort from English. So please forgive me if I switch back, if I'm fluid between whether OER or singular or plural. Okay, so allow me that, please. So let's talk about um, the SUNY definition of OER. And that's important for today because um, what I, as I mentioned before, I'm part of the, um, the SUNY initiative and there's certain requirements uh, or certain definition that's been uh, um, accepted by SUNY that we're gonna play by for the rest of this afternoon. So OER are generally understood to be teaching, uh, learning and research resources that reside either in the public domain or frankly, more commonly, they've been released under an intellectual property license. That's usually the Creative Commons license. And I'm gonna be showing that to you on works that we look at in our searching portion later. Um, and as part of this Creative Commons licensing, it means that the, ma the materials designated with that um, can be used under what are often called the five R's of OER. And those five R's are the material can be reused, revised, remixed, redistributed, and retained by the faculty member or the student. Those are important five R's. Those five R's are important to think about in, con in contrast with traditionally copyrighted material. If you are currently using an, a, a textbook that was published by maybe Cengage or um, uh, you know McGraw Hill or one of the other big um, one of the other big textbook publishers. You know that you cannot make a full copy of a 400-page textbook and distribute it to your students on Blackboard, right? We all know that's a copyright violation. So in contrast to that, OERs are uh, assigned this special license that allows others to redistribute them, to customize them, and so on. And that's what we're going to be talking about this afternoon, more about that. Um, often, OER are free and online, but not always. And we'll take a look at some examples that aren't um, necessarily online, um, although, as, as I said, most are free. Okay, so uh, for the rest of the afternoon, that's the definition that we will be working with and will be implied in everything else that goes on. All right. So, um, missed a slide. I also just like to share with you, how come it's me that's up here? Why is the library at the lead in the OER initiative? And I like to put that into some context for you in terms of the library is all about providing access to learning materials, um, to teaching materials. That's really our mission. <clears throat> One way that that's been um, very evident is our work uh, and our commitment to providing reserved textbook services. We heard our assistant vice president, Ronalyn Wilson, um, re recollecting her, her years as an undergraduate where she was sharing textbooks with students. Um, we, with, with her roommates and classmates and so on. Believe it or not, in the library, in a typical year before COVID, okay, so we'll go back a little bit in time, um, reserve textbooks were the most popular service that we offered. We loaned about 16, we loaned textbooks about 16,000 times in our last academic year before COVID. Um, most popular, uh, so these were students who weren't purchasing them or they had to wait to purchase them till maybe financial aid came in or they'd saved enough money. But
but anyway, the library or before the library, the Instructional Media Center um, was right there providing those textbooks to students who generally meant they couldn't afford them. Um, the library also, it's part of our mission to provide access to learning materials. That's what libraries are all about. The other foundational principle of our service is to provide assistance to faculty and to students in terms of finding, um, searching for and discovering high quality uh, materials. So that's what this workshop is about. And you'll hear about some other services we'll provide um, in, you know, after this in terms of your search for OER. So next I wanted to just describe, give you a little bit of background about the SUNY OER initiative. Um, in it was either 2016 or 2017 that the New York State Legislature made a surprise uh, budget allocation of $8 million to be split between CUNY and SUNY for OER support. Um, a group of students in the uh, uh, New York Public Interest Group had, um, had convinced a, a number of lawmakers that the, uh, that it was really important to address um, the cost of college attendance and that supporting OER growth was one way to effectively do this. Um, so SUNY, uh, you're, you're gonna hear from the SUNY OER services director here in a, just a minute. SUNY put out a call for campuses to participate in this. And so Hudson Valley got in on this right at the beginning. Um, and uh, I think we've been very successful. We are now offering every semester at least 100 um, uh, course sections that are using OER materials here on our campus. In case you're wondering, is anybody doing this? Yes, there are many faculty here at Hudson Valley who are involved in OER. Um, we, from, from our approximately $70,000 that we've received from SUNY over the years. We, uh, if every student that was, that's taking an OER course right now were to buy that textbook at list price from the bookstore, it would add up to about a million dollars in, in just less than five years. So we've had a tremendous amount of impact and I'm looking forward to your participation to extend that growth. So next, I would like to uh, turn the floor over to, um, to our colleague, uh, Mike Daly, who is from SUNY OER Services. And as I noted on the slide, he has a secret superpower as a librarian. So Mike, over to you. Thanks, Brenda. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, can let me know that you're seeing that okay. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me again. Um, welcome to everybody. As Brenda said, I'm Mike Daly. I'm the Director of Operations for SUNY OER Services. This is always an event I look forward to every year. This kind of kickoff um, OER awareness event that Hudson Valley Community College uh, provides to all its faculty. So certainly glad to be here as well. Uh, but probably more importantly, I'm glad to end my Friday at, 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 with community college colleagues. A um, little background myself, I spent about 10 years prior to my role with SUNY System working at a SUNY community college. And really, um, is, as much as I travel throughout SUNY, it's nowhere else but community colleges that I really see and realize um, faculties of awareness and administration's awareness of the broad holistic supports that are really essential to student success. Um, and I feel passionately and really intentionally that OER is one of those choices um, that kind of fits into that broad holistic ecosystem. So my role really is to stand up, to sit down, and then support the efforts uh, that are in place at your campus and support the choices that you might make um, regarding um, open educational resources. Um, so really SUNY's focus on OER is a focus on student success, but we also understand that that focus can't lack, um, can't lack in singularity. And so it's also a focus on faculty success and making sure that faculty have the supports, the knowledge, the awareness, and the tools that they need um, to make the choices that they are um, deciding with open educational resources work in their classrooms. And I think you'll hear that from your colleagues today in the faculty panel, as well as the keynote speaker from Monroe Community College. 
What we're really aiming to do is increase access, increase access to educational resources. These might be small nuggets in your course that are open educa educational resources, or they might be an entire course or an entire textbook. But at the same time, and Brenda alluded to this with some of the savings that have been realized at Hudson Valley Community College, we're looking to decrease, decrease the cost of public higher education in New York State through faculty choice of using open educational resources. At the bottom line of that, we want to leverage excellence. We want to leverage excellence in content experts, such as all of you are. You know your content, you know your courses better than anybody else. And we also want to bring to bear um, some excellence within our system, within the SUNY system, as well as some external partners uh, that we've partnered with. So SUNY OER Services uh, works closely with about 60 campuses and over, I think now, 7,000 SUNY faculty that are actively using open educational resources every semester at community colleges, at technical colleges, at R1 universities. Um, so really, it's a broad swath of faculty. We partner with a SUNY professional development to enhance and broaden some of the um, faculty development offerings that might be available on your campus, uh, as Jen Eaton's office uh, delivers so expertly. We also work with the SUNY Online Support Services. They're our tier one help desk support team. So if you have questions regarding OER about OER in SUNY, or if you're using OER and encountering problems, um, you certainly have supports available on campus, but a simple email to oer at suny.edu um, gets you immediate help seven days a week as well. Most importantly, because I was looking at the, the results from the poll that Brenda started this presentation with, um, we partner with the SUNY Press and we do that specifically uh, to demystify the idea that OER is only online, OER is not only online. And so the SUNY Press is an important partner in providing faculty that option uh, to offer their students offline um, or print versions of open educational resources. That's certainly a service that we feel is valuable. We also have some external partners. So um, throughout the day or through conversations with me, you might hear mention of Lumen Learning or Carnegie Mellon's Open Learning Initiative, um, as we'll sh share SUNY's Ready to Adopt catalog later. Um, the content uh, that Lumen Learning and Open Learning Initiative um, offer is always available free of use. Anybody can use it in the world. Um, what SUNY faculty and students have available to them at no cost is some of the quote unquote containers or courseware or platforms and supports that Lumen and Open uh, Carnegie Mellon's OLI offer. So if you see those symbols or those words, that's really what we're talking about. Uh, so Brenda mentioned some of the success that's been um, happening at Hudson Valley Community College since the start um, of this OER initiative. So I dug into Cirrus, which is kind of SUNY's data warehouse. And my thanks to Brenda and her team for uh, diligent reporting as much as possible, some of the course sections using OER every year. And just looking at the, the last three fall semesters, fall 21 isn't available to me yet. Um, we're seeing not only a, a, a growth, but a trending growth that's really significant um, in terms of impact. Um, and what I think is maybe more significant, uh, in addition to the, the hundreds of sections that are using OER, Hudson Valley Community College every year, is if we look at some of the course titles that are currently using open educational resources. And it's this diversity um, and this kind of um, wide swath of the curriculum and the courses and the offerings that really shows me the flexibility um, and the appreciation of the flexibility for the faculty teaching these courses that they saw in open educational resources. And so what I always remind faculty and I'll remind you as well today, um, if you think there's no one in the world teaching your course um, or there's no one who has yet taken that first step to thinking about OER um, for your specific course, uh, reach out, ask the question. Chances are we can probably connect you with somebody, whether at Hudson Valley Community College or another SUNY Community College or even nationally. Um, so you can talk in a very collegial faculty faculty way about what they're using, why they made those choices and the effectiveness that they're seeing. SUNY's Ready to Adopt catalog we'll spend some time with later, but I just want to point it out now. It's oer.suny.edu. In here, you'll find openly licensed peer-reviewed content, uh, ancillary resources. So if you're a faculty member who uses PowerPoints or test banks or study guides, you'll see those available to you as well. Those are openly, also openly licensed and a choice for you to use. You're not required to use them. All the content in here meets or exceeds SUNY's accessibility standards, which is certainly important if we're going to offer content, we want to make sure that all our students, regardless of ability, can access that content. The content here is customizable, so you can change the words, you can change the images, you can reuse parts of it, you can swap things from different courses, totally up to you. As I said earlier, this content's always free, regardless of SUNY's partnership with Lumen Learning and OLI. It's the platforms and courseware that are currently at no cost to SUNY faculty and students. And perhaps most importantly, as we've all moved into remote, hybrid, high flex, or online modality, um, all our courses um, at the catalog provide a seamless integration with Blackboard uh, that makes an effortless transition for you and your students. This is the part where I sit back down. If you have questions, OER at SUNY.edu. I am going to be a passive participant in the workshop today. Um, so Brenda, feel free to call me if there's any questions. Um, but I look forward to the faculty panelists, the keynote speaker, and what's always a great conversation. Thank you.
Great. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you for those words. And I especially appreciate your graphic showing the um, tremendous growth here at the college. And, um, you know, I hope that by each of you being here today, those numbers are only going to continue to increase. Really, um, I, I thought probably a year ago, gosh, I'm not so sure we're going to be able to show continued growth. But faculty embracing of OER here on campus has been remarkable. I also want to say um, in advance of our faculty panelists that um, one of the things I'm most excited about is a number of you are here today because uh, you've been inspired by your colleagues in your department. And um, what's really wonderful is the sustainability now of the, of the momentum that we've got going on our campus that you're, many of you are hearing from your, your departmental colleagues about the success they're having, and that's what motivated you to be here today. Um, so this is really great, and it bodes well for continued uh, expansion of use of OER uh, here on campus. So, you know, one of the things, one of the questions or uh, qualities that I included in the first poll was, is OER student-centered? And I was really pleased to see many of you chose that as one of the attributes you consider when you think about OER. So what I'd like to do now is just um, switch and I'm gonna share my screen again and show a short video that we created. Um, it was created by uh, my colleague, Stephanie Clow Ross. Um, and it shows uh, where we were about two years ago with OER. And um, very importantly, and it includes some student testimonials. So um, I'm gonna show that clip now, it's about three minutes. So just bear with me while I bring my screen up and, um, and show this. And let's see how I'm doing here, bear with me. And I'm gonna get this started. Open educational resources are freely available. High quality learning materials that can be downloaded, printed and shared to better serve all students. Textbook costs should never be a barrier to higher education. With OER, students have access to free or low-cost materials before the semester begins and long after it ends. Hudson Valley Community College is proud to support the SUNY OER initiative. The book that I use most frequently for general psychology, uh, I believe is about $130. The books that I uh, used for educational psychology ran about $250. Uh, I believe that when I adopt an OER, I'm helping a student make education more affordable. Uh, it really falls in line, I think, with the philosophy of Hudson Valley. We want students to have uh, accessible and affordable education, and offering them an option for an OER textbook really um, helps with that mission. Uh, the students that are saving $150 on my textbook can use that money for rent or transportation or even buying food. Uh, so it's, it's a big benefit to them. Last semester, I spent approximately $475 on textbooks. Around $500 on textbooks last semester. I spent about $350. Last semester, I only spent $250, thankfully, because I was renting the books. Um, if I wasn't, I would have spent approximately $1,000. I have not purchased a textbook because um, before because of how expensive it was. I usually try to get the textbook from other students in the class or you know use online sources if possible. I had to purchase all the textbooks for every class because they were mandatory because we had homework in the textbooks. If it was too expensive to buy, I would rent it instead. Students at first are confused when I tell them there's no textbook uh, to purchase. And then on the first day when I show them, you have access to your book online. You can download it as a PDF. Um, you can print out copies. You can share this information with other students. They're amazed and they're very grateful. Students who prefer print books are um, are not out of luck in this case because they can still purchase the open educational textbook at our bookstore uh, at a substantially reduced rate, so it's win-win. Textbooks weren't as expensive. I could definitely spend the money on everyday necessities, transportation, um, 
and a lot of things that most college students need. I could use it for groceries and rent and any bills I have. I could have quit one of my jobs so that I could study more. If I have to spend $900, I would probably reinvest that back into my tuition. To learn more about OER, visit our library website. So I hope that you found those um, student comments to be uh, compelling. Uh, to me, they certainly supported the data that we heard from Ronalyn Wilson and her welcoming remarks about um, the number of students who opt not to purchase textbooks. To me, it's reflected in the library's um, circulation data in terms of the number of students who come and borrow hours. And I hope that um, from this introduction that you've been inspired by our administrators who, uh, by, by Ronalyn um, and the comments that she shared, um, that you're um, excited about the freedom that adopting OER provides to you in terms of your academic freedom as a faculty member to assert your, con your content expertise in choosing and uh, compiling information that you think meets best your the learning objectives in your courses. Um, and I hope that you'll return uh, in just a few minutes. We're going to take a short break. We're right on time. We're going to return at, uh, let me just click forward in my slide here to see when we're going to return. We're going to return at 145 and then you'll continue to be inspired, no doubt, by some of your Hudson Valley faculty and by our keynote speaker. Um, so I will see you at 145 and we will continue, um, continue with our program then. And I encourage you to get up and stretch and move about um, in this long afternoon. Um, see you soon. I'll see you in about, uh, about nine minutes. Thank you. <laughs>